settle back. And don't know one of you dare to relax. I want you to fasten your seat belts securely because this thing's liable to take off just any minute. You have your superstars in pop music. You have your superstars in country music. And somebody asked me the other day who the superstars were in gospel music. Well, none of the people in gospel music claim the position and the status of superstar. But there are those who have pioneered, who have paved the way, who have sung across the face of America and into Canada and to other foreign countries that have really put the gospel on the map. One of the groups that has done this not only through their singing but also through their publishing of gospel and spiritual sacred music, through their school of music, through the National Quartet Convention, through talent agencies and many other varied facets of the gospel music industry, these fellows' name has to be stamped on the top of the marquee when it's flashed internationally. I want you to make some noise and make them welcome here to Levitt Auditorium, Murray State University in Murray, Kentucky. And I want you to know that it's none other than the lowest bass singer in the world, J.D. Sumner, and the Stamp
many loved ones who've made this trip I know. Lies. Be- 
behind the shades of my tomorrows. But I have God's love, that's all I need. Though I'd like to own a lot of worldly goods and to hold the key to treasures just for me. God's love, that's all I need. I was just a man in search of happiness, and in my search I wandered deep in sin. Jesus forgave me when I asked him to. With his touch he made me pure within If the only way to enter paradise Was to live a perfect life for all to see Then I guess I'd spend eternity in agony
Jesus changed my life completely. Praise his name. He has shown the way to heaven. Praise his name. Praise his name. I will follow him always. If I'm tried, I'll stop and pray. For I'm told that he is with me. Praise his name. All my burdens have been lifted since he came. And my broken heart. Yes, my life has been much sweeter since he came. I will lay all of my sorrow in his hand. In his hand. For I have placed all my tomorrow. In his hand, in his his hand. hand. just a few days ago. I married when I was 16. I'm 50 years old. I know, I don't look like it. (laughs) But I've been married 34 years to the same woman. Of course, I'm sick of her. (laughs) No, I'm just kidding. I got a good wife. My wife is stuck by me through all the trouble that I wouldn't have got in to start with if I hadn't married her. (laughs) 
back some years ago when I was with the uh, Blackwood Brothers in 1957. We went to California. Uh, we left our bus at home and all got in our cars and took our youngins and went to California. And uh, it was our first trip out there to see Disneyland and a lot of them movie stars. And uh, me and my wife stayed in a motel right uh, downtown Hollywood, looking over Hollywood. And uh, one afternoon about sundown, honey, you better do something about that cough. Uh, you got any cough drops, Ed? You ain't got no cough drop? Uh, one afternoon about sundown, well, she asked me to take her riding on one of them freeways overlooking Hollywood. And uh, I guess she is sort of feeling romantical uh, being out there around all them movie stars. And we was riding down the freeway and my wife looked over at me and grinned and said, honey, will you love me when I'm old and gray? And I said, I reckon so, darling, I've loved you through two or three shades already. <laughs> You know, they, they got now what they call women's lip. Uh, uh, some women want to be liberated, and I'm not speaking against it. Uh, if they want to be liberated, I think they ought to be liberated. Uh, if mine wanted to be liberated, I'd sure turn her loose. <laughs> but apparently, she don't want to be liberated. And, uh, but if you're going to be married, you ought to be married the Bible way. Well, apparently you ain't married, don't know nothing about it. Okay. But if you're going to be married, you ought to be married the Bible way. The Bible says for the man to be the head of the house. And when... And when you, when you head of something... That means you're in charge. Means you run things. Means you're a boss. I'm, a, I'm boss at my house. I ain't home much, but <laughs> what time I'm home, I am boss. B-O-S-S. We was going about a month here a while back and we came in and my wife, uh, as she always does, fixed me a dinner that you won't believe. Uh, country steak, chicken and dumpling, squash, rice and gravy, butter bean, lima bean, blue bean, yellow bean, white bean, cornbread, iced tea. And even though she is nice to me, when I got through, I had to go downtown and do a television program. And I told her, you can't let a woman get ahead of you. So I told her, I said, woman, you see here, when I get back from town on some hot water, I don't mean sister, I want it lukewarm. I want it H-O-T hot. I never did like to wash dishes in cold water. <laughs> A lot of people won't admit their mistakes. Uh, have you got a problem, son? I thought you was having an epileptic fit there for a minute, son. We, I was, a lot of people won't admit their mistakes, but I was very good friends with uh, former President Nixon. Uh, now, a lot of people wouldn't admit that after what's happened. And I hate he, I hate he got caught. <laughs> but he did. And I hate he had to resign. But he did. And then, if you remember, he got sick. And uh, just because uh, he got caught, I don't turn my back on my friend. When he got sick, I called Pat every day checking on him. And uh, 
you know he recovered real good at San Clemente and uh, uh, I just had my 50th birthday uh, last November the 19th and on my birthday President Nixon called me and to congratulate me on my 50th birthday and we got to talking and I asked him I said President Nixon I can't help but call him president uh, uh, I said uh, what are you going to do now he said, well, I sure ain't going to fool no politics. I'm sick of politics. So I've been watching uh, such people as you and Jane Blackwood, Rock Spear. So I just think I'm going to organize me a gospel quartet. So I want you to book me at the convention and be on the lookout for me a bus and a PA set. And said, you tell everybody that you appear before when the Nixon Quartet gets on the road. We'll have plenty of records, but no tapes will be available. <laughs> I, when I was young, well, I ain't old now, but uh, when I was first started singing, uh, I was 19 years old, and uh, I was starving to death, and went to a watch school during the day, and would sing at night, and learned to work on watches in case I ever lose my beautiful voice. Well, uh, I'd have something to do. And I still work on watches occasionally. Uh, Bill Bays lives close to me in Nashville, and the other day he had a uh, called me and said he had a clock he wanted me to fix. So I got some tools and went up to his house and uh, he had, it wasn't a regular kind of clock, it was a grandfather's clock. And I didn't have enough tools to work on it so I decided to take it back down to my house to work on it. And I'm walking down the sidewalk with this grandfather's clock way up over my head and I couldn't see where I was going and a man run into me and it made me mad because he could see where he is going and I couldn't see where I was going. So I said, won't you watch where you going? He said, won't you wear a wristwatch like everybody else? <laughs> besides uh, singing. Uh, nobody does but me. I have an early morning paper out. Right there. <laughs> I always service it when I'm in town, but when I'm not, my wife uh, puts on rubber boots. And, uh, but people, people uh, want to know a lot about quartet people or entertainers. And uh, we spend, Bill Bays and Ed Enoch and uh, uh, Captain Kangaroo and <laughs> Eva May. Uh, <laughs> spend more time together than we do at home. Uh, I've been singing for over 30 years, pardon me. And I don't guess if you were to put all the time that I've spent with my wife, it wouldn't uh, be over five years uh, uh, during the 30. But we spent a lot of time together. We were going to Phoenix, Arizona about three weeks ago. You sorry rascal, you. <laughs> and there just ain't much to do on a bus. That's all there is to it. Uh, you can go to the back of the bus and get ready to come back up to the front. <laughs> and we have a lot of time to discuss uh, things on the bus. We discuss 
uh, politics, uh, religion, uh, which uh, the other day they was arguing on religion. And uh, I come up to the front of the bus after going to the back and getting ready to come back up to the front. <laughs> and they was arguing which denomination was right and which one was the best and uh, really shouldn't argue on religion. So I went back to my bunk and got my Bible and proved to them we got all kind of, uh, we got all kinds on our bus. We got Baptists, Methodists, Pentecostals, Democrats, we got that. <laughs> and I went back to my bunk and got my Bible and proved to them beyond a shadow of a doubt where Baptists going to be the first ones to get to heaven. I don't mean that the rest of you ain't going to get to go. It just means they're going to arrive there first. Because it plainly says in the Bible, the dead in Christ arise first. Y'all know once in a while we uh, operate as backup singers. And we was on a television show about uh, two, two and a half years ago in Honolulu. <laughs> and uh, we was in Phoenix that night, and this man come up to me and said, I was sitting in my living room watching a television show. and." When they introduced J.D. Sumner and the Stamp Quartet was on that show, it made me want to throw up. <laughs> I said, what's the matter? Do you, do you think us being on that television show was a sin? He said, I sure do. I said, well, if it was a sin for us to be on it, it was a sin for you to sit there and watch it. And to prove I'm smarter than you, I got paid for sinning and you sinned for nothing. <laughs> One of the biggest questions that's asked the Stamps Quartet, they want to know who all is married and who ain't married. I guess that question is popular because of my good looks. But the four of us that stand up, we're all married. Him at the piano, him ain't married. And if you look at him, you can tell why him ain't married. <laughs> but we believe in prayer. <laughs> and this is a good place for you to get you a bride, Ronnie at the school, any of you young ladies that see anything at all in him, if you will see me during the school, I'll be glad to take the application. The rest of us comb our hair. He don't. He's got an eating fork. He just pulls his up and lets it fall wherever it may. Now, Ronnie is a, a fantastic musician. He's 21 years old, does the arranging, and is a fantastic piano player. Make him welcome, Mr. Ronnie Mays. Ronnie. The young man standing on the far end of the quartet in the white suit uh, has been singing with the Stamps Quartet going on five years. I've sung with a lot of tenors and uh, heard a lot of tenor singers. I've never heard one better than Bill Bays, and I'm very serious. Mr. Bill Bays. <laughs> now, the young man standing to my immediate right uh, is probably more popular than anybody else in the Stamps Quartet. You've seen him on television many, many times for many years. 
Captain Kangaroo. <laughs> and I don't know what kind of deodorant you're wearing, if any, but it ain't working, buddy, I'll tell you. <laughs> now, this young man sang with and managed the Prophets Quartet for 15 years. Last year, he successfully managed them out of business. <laughs> we needed a man, and we asked Ed Hill to join the Stamps Quartet, and we haven't regretted it one moment since. He's one of the finest men that I've ever worked with. If we can get him to bathe and use deodorant, he'll be perfect. Mr. Ed Hill, what about it? I saved the one uh, in the middle to last because I like him the least. <laughs> He's my wife's son-in-law. <laughs> He's not my son-in-law because I reserved the right to choose my son-in-law and I sure didn't choose him. I was a happy man until five years ago. I had a beautiful wife, very intelligent, two daughters. I thought both of them was intelligent. Come to find out that one of them wasn't playing with a full deck. <laughs> she married him. I was happy. I just, when I didn't have nothing else to do, I just go around being happy. <laughs> I just get off by myself and just smile. It's a happy. One night I was sitting in my happy home, in my happy living room rocking in my happy rocking chair. <laughs> Just sitting there smiling. Here came him and my daughter streaking in the living room. <laughs> I mean parading in the living room and announced that they was going to get married. I was nauseated. <laughs> At that time, my daughter liked him a lot. I didn't like him none. After five years, I like him a lot, and she don't like him none. <laughs> a lot of people make the statement as to who Ed favors. Some people says he favors uh, the Reverend Billy Graham. And I guess if you used to cut off about two pounds of hair and brush his teeth, he might look like the Reverend Graham. Then there are those that says, no, to me, he favors Ted Kennedy. And I guess to somebody, he might look like old Teddy Boy. But to me, he looks like Hubert Humphrey. <laughs> no, I, uh, laying all seriousness aside, uh, <laughs> Ed's a fine uh, son-in-law. Uh, and I'm proud that he's in the Stamps Quartet. I don't think there's ever been a greater lead singer than Ed or a man that puts more into it. Mr. Ed Enoch. <laughs> it's been said that uh, you can replace a man's money, but his time can never be replaced. Thank you for giving us this much time, really this much part of your lives tonight. We hope in some small way through gospel music that our songs will be of help to mankind. And we hope tonight that in some way that our songs and this program Maybe we'll make your tomorrows brighter 
And if you know not the Christ that we sing about, maybe some song will make you realize your own need of Jesus Christ as personal Savior. If I can help somebody. If I can help somebody as I pass along, if I can cheer somebody with a word or a song, if I can show some. program was one of the most exciting, as I said a moment ago, that I've ever uh, been involved with, and I was just out listening to some of it on the tape in the control room, and it just sounded fantastic. And I, I heard so many of my friends out here, I could tell your voices almost on that tape. <laughs> yeah, I could tell who was yelling the loudest and making the most noise. But I want you to really make them welcome. If you enjoyed that first half and you're expecting the same on this second part, I want you to really let them know how much you appreciate their efforts tonight. They're really working under pressure, new material for a live album, and there's a lot goes into making this a success. So it is a, a large amount of pressure on top of these guys, but they're really fighters, and they're coming out punching and swinging real good, and I want you to let them know how much you appreciate it. Right now, again, J.D. Summer and the Stamp for
Quartet did a song. It was an old hymn called, I Need Thee. And they just did a dynamite job with it, and I thought, my gracious, how much better it sound if we had a bunch of people backing them up. Ladies and gentlemen, what would I do for you? I need thee. <laughs>
soul. Come, Lord Jesus. We read our newspaper and watch our evening news on TV. We hear nothing but bad news. We've lost prestige in Indochina. We expect to wake up any morning and there'll be war in the Far East. But we're told in God's word that we would humble ourselves, that we would hear from heaven. And we're told to lift up our heads for our redemption draweth nigh. Whether Jesus comes tomorrow, next week, or next year, Ed, I just feel like something good is about to happen. I just feel like something good is about to happen. I just feel like something good is on its way. He has promised that he'd open all of heaven. And brother, it could happen any day When God's people will humble themselves and call on Jesus And they look to heaven expecting as they pray I just feel like something good is about to happen And brother, this could be that very day I just feel like something good is about to happen I just feel like something good is on his way He has promised that he'd open all of heaven And brother, it could happen any day When God's people will humble themselves and call on Jesus And they look to heaven expecting as they pray I just feel like something good is about to happen and brother, this could be that very day I have read all the bad news in the paper And it seems like things get bleaker every day But for this child of God, it makes no difference For I know it's bound to get better either way We have never been more thrilled about tomorrow Sunshine's always burst through skies of gray. I just feel like something good is about to happen. And brother, this could be that very day. I just feel like something good is about to happen. I just feel like something good is on his way. He has promised that he'd open all of heaven.
there's an empty tomb in Jerusalem today that plainly to us testifies that he who slept there no longer is dead but liveth and reigneth on high and just as sure as he came before to suffer and die for my sins just that sure what a feel in my heart lets me know he's soon coming again sing me a song about Calvary show me suffering and loss tell it till each part of my soul shall cry Say soon each mountain and high lofty place will be brought down at God's will. And yet in my heart forever will stand a vision of God, God those hills. Cause that's where my Jesus my Savior and Lord Gladly the sacrifice made So when I repented And came to His throne I found sin's debt Already was paid Sing me a song
was filled and to speak for the occasion the nation's best known orator had been flown in after speaking and thrilling the audience and in closing he said if there would be a request and I can I would be glad to fill it in the far corner of the banquet hall stood up an elderly, silver-haired, retired minister. He said, Sir, could you quote for me the 23rd Psalm? The orator, being somewhat surprised at this request, said, Yes, sir. If when I'm through, then you too quote the 23rd Psalm. The old minister nodded his head yes and was seated and the orator began. The Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside still waters. He restoreth my soul. 
When he had finished, a thunderous applause, cheers, and a standing ovation. Then he said to the minister, Now, sir, you quote the 23rd Psalm. The old minister feebly arose, his voice broken by years in the ministry begin. The Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures he leadeth me beside still waters. He restoreth my soul. When he had finished, there wasn't a dry eye in the banquet hall. The orator stood up and said, Ladies and gentlemen, I have reached your ears. He has reached your hearts. And the difference is, I know the 23rd Psalm, but he, he knows the shepherd. I can feel the touch of his hand.
There's a place where I go to be alone. Now when my burdens seem so heavy to bear And oh, what strength I find in my trigo Thank you so much. God be with you till we meet again. By his counsel, God uphold you. In his arms securely tonight. There's some students that have worked hard, not just today and tonight, but all week long. There's some mothers that have been slaving at home, cooking meals, darning clothes and doing the ironing, running the vacuum cleaner. There's a dad that's been working, driving a truck, delivering the mail, delivering the bread, picking up the laundry. All types of occupations are represented here. And yet, We've experienced something that's most unique, as J.D. expressed a moment ago, something that's free, something that's God-given, our freedom, our liberty, and certainly the love of God in action. And what better way 
to say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And just to bow our hearts and bow our heads in prayer. Heavenly Father, let us just say it again. Thank you, Lord. We do love you. And Lord, even though there are those who have worked hard and long hours, who have come here tonight and listened, listen for the voice of God, listen as your name has been exalted in song, listen for that special touch and that special word. I thank you, Lord, for the opportunity because you still care. You've proven that you still love us because you invited us here tonight into thy presence.